What's the plan when it comes to your dressing today? How many people in this country are wearing at a brand swanky new clothes at Wemengia kwa duka wakanunua brand clothes straight? Eh. Or how many of us are actually using second owner? Slightly used. Mm. AKA Mitumba. Pre-loved. Yeah, pre-loved. Yeah, that's the word actually. Pre-loved. <laughs> right? AKA Mitumba. And that's a conversation we want to have. What's the impact of the Mitumba industry in this country in terms of economy, in terms of social, everything else? And that's why we've invited the chairperson of the Mitumba Consortium Association of Kenya, Teresia Warimo. Good morning, Teresia. Good morning. Welcome back to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Asante. It's good to have you again on the hot seat. Thank you for having me. I've got greetings for you from CT Muga, who is not in today. Okay. He's a little bit under the weather. Uh -huh. He'll be back on Monday. God All really. right. But he says the proverbs for this week are mm. from the kingdom of Morocco. Okay. Do you know what the capital of Morocco is? Jesus, no. <laughs> I just embarrass myself like, okay. right there. Uh, don't worry, I'll tell you. Uh -huh. Rabat. Oh, Rabat. Yes. The largest city in uh -huh. Morocco is Casablanca. Yeah. I... There are other cities in Morocco like... Tangier. And... Marrakesh. And... And okay. others. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The main languages spoken in Morocco mm -hmm. are Arabic and how do you pronounce that? Berber <laughs> or Berber. You want to say Berber? Or Berber. But they probably say Berber. It's Berber. Yeah. It's written Berber. So let's just say Berber, okay? For the purposes of this co particular conversation. Mm -hmm. And of course, they also have other languages that they mix. There's African and European cultures. They've got uh, some Moroccan dialects mm -hmm. of Arabic. They've got some areas of uh, Morocco that also has a bit of Spanish and French. Mm. Okay. But the main official languages are those Arabic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today's proverb, and you want you to listen and then you give us your interpretation of it. If you are responsible for a problem, you should find the solution. If you're responsible for a problem, you should find the solution. How do you interpret that proverb? Wow. <laughs> what do you think the deeper meaning here is? Yeah, the deeper meaning is pretty much the same. If mm. you are part of the problem, you are part of the solution. That means nothing is too hard for anybody. Mm. Mm. And anybody, if they want, they can do it. Mm. Yeah. If you'd like, if you want to, you will find a solution. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Mm. That's very good. Mm. Now, a lot has been happening um, locally and globally Yes. around the issue of second-hand clothes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The last time you were here, mm -hmm. you mentioned a couple of numbers and figures yes. regarding the Mitumba industry in this country. Mm -hmm. As a chairperson of the Mitumba Consortium Association of Kenya, let's start with those global figures. Yes. Okay? How much Mitumba is imported into the country in a year? How many people wear Mitumba? Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mitumba, as she said, is all our all-time favorite. Mm. We always love Mitumba because, number one, it's affordable, good quality, and uh, fashionable. It's not something that somebody will compete with you when you put on your Mutumba dress. Mm. It's not possible to find somebody else with the same dress you are wearing. <laughs> That's why we love Mitumba. Mm -hmm. Number one, we are over two million people who are trading in this business. Two million people, over two million people who are directly employed by this trade. Mm. When we talk about how many people wear Mitumba, we are talking about over 80% of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Over 80% of Kenyans. It doesn't matter whether they are high class or low class. Mm. We also have high class markets, like toy market. Mm. Toy market is for the big bosses. Anybody who feels they have their money, they go to toy market because mm. toy market, they are very popular with camera. Mm. Camera is the number one uh, 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 clothes, mm -hmm. the first selection in a bill. Mm. They go to toy market. So we are over 80% of Kenyans who are wearing Mitumba. There is another group of people. Mm. They are not wearing because they have money. They are wearing because they cannot afford a new cloth. Mm. And those are the majority. That is over... 50% uh, of Kenyans. What do you mean they cannot afford new clothes? Yeah, because new clothes are expensive. Mm. And uh, over 50% of Kenyans, they live below poverty line. There are people who live below $2 a day. Mm. 
So if somebody is living below $2 a day, that means asking them to buy uh, something that is worth 1000 is a little bit too expensive. Mm. But with this 1000 they are able to clothe the whole family. They are able to dress the whole family with the mitumba. Mm. Yeah. So why is mitumba so cheap? The mitumba is cheap because initially, even from the source, it is supposed to be like charity. Even when they come here in Africa, they are charity. Mm. It's supposed to be charity. That's why they are compressed in one bale. Mm. Mutumba means compressed together. Oh. That's what it means. Oh. When you put them together and you bail them, that's what we call Mutumba. And when they come, the cost that we pay for Mutumba is not actually the cost of buying the clothes. It's the cost of, uh, of dealing with the uh, labor the labor there is if even if they collect as donations mm. because mutumba is collected as donations mm. in uh abroad they are collected as donations even if they are collected as donations they needed they need to be transported so there has to be some charge for collection for transportation and number two now preparation of that uh mutumba the labor mm. for for sorting bailing and literally we are housing mm. all those things so by the time they get here uh the only big issue that we have is our government they do not understand that these clothes are supposed to come here as donations they have imposed some duty now the problem is they have made this to be like a booming business for the government right now we are paying over fifteen thousand in terms of duty Fifteen thousand what? Over fifteen thousand dollars per per container, per forty foot container. Mm -hmm. We are paying over forty uh, over fifteen thousand dollars. So if we are paying over fifteen thousand dollars, now that's where now uh, Mitumba is becoming costly. But Mitumba is supposed to be cheaper clothes for poor people who are poor in sub-Saharan Africa and other uh, other Western countries, which are also poor. Okay, so the initial thing was that there were folks, I mean, we hear about those organizations like <laughs> the Salvation Army yes. and people like that who would put together clothes that were not being used and then they would send them off yes. to other places where people needed them. Yes. So then at what point did mm -hmm. it change mm -hmm. from clothes donations yes. to then people actually, because we know that happens, yes. that people actually searching out for them and saying, well, I'm looking for a bale of whatever. Yes. A bale of boots or a bale of something yeah and then it became a business what happened yeah the the people like salvation army red cross and save us they are people licensed by their governments to collect clothes for charity but these are too many clothes that cannot be given to people the the only thing you can do is to turn these clothes into money mm. so after now they give out the clothes that are needed maybe in europe or in america then the balance of those clothes is too much. Mm. So they have to have warehouse, they have to sort them, and they have to sell them to other African countries who need it. Mm -hmm. And these people now, when we buy, we are not actually buying very expensive. If you look at it critically, the prices of how much we buy, it is they make some small profit. Mm. But what they do majorly is to make sure they cover their cost of transport, we are housing and the sorting. And sorting is very expensive because labor in Western countries is very expensive. That's how now we get to buy them in a few dollars. Mm. But it's supposed to be a donation, it's supposed to be gift. And if you look at it today, the reason you cannot buy new clothes built together is because labor, th these clothes are very expensive. But with the Mitumba, because initially they were given for free, mm. what is needed is just to cover their ch the charges. Mm -hmm. That's how we are able now to have a business of Mitumba. So it changed because what? Those who were giving the donations realized that they could start making some money? Or mm. what changed? Because now, let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. I want to start a business. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, well, I, these are the kind of clothes that I want to sell. Whether mm -hmm. I go through the association or whomever. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I, I will not get it for free because yeah. the assumption is that mm-hmm. the people that you spoke you spoke about savers red cross whatever mm-hmm. is that i can get a bail and i can go distribute in my neighborhood but that's yes. not the case yes. i have to buy the bail yes so at what point did it change from a donation that you sent across the sea yeah so then now you pay before it comes because of what i have just explained mm. it has to be business because the people who have received it as donation, mm. they actually have to pay for it. Ah, voila, okay. They have to pay for their for the transport. Mm-hmm. They have to pay for warehousing. Mm-hmm. They also have to pay for sorting. Mm-hmm. And sorting, as I said, in Western countries is it's very expensive, expensive okay. because you pay people by the hour. Mm. That's why they have to bail them and sell them. But the price that you buy, let's say, for example, a, a t-shirt mm-hmm. a t-shirt is costing maybe 10,000 mm-hmm. or 15,000 that t-shirt shillings. yeah shillings mm-hmm. 15,000 shillings mm-hmm. if it is costing 15,000 shillings and in inside that bale 45 kgs it has about 250 to, to 300 pieces mm-hmm. is that not almost like a donation mm-hmm. That's how we are able to pass this business to our value chain. We are able to cater for the camera, the person who gets the best, Mm -hmm. the person who gets the second best, the third best, and then the fagia. The fagia is a terminology that is used for people who who buy the last Mm. in a consignment Mm -hmm. or in a bill. The people who come last Mm -hmm. and buy. That does not mean that what they are buying is bad. Maybe the, what is remaining there is not trendy. After the like, selection by After others. the selection. The people who select, they do not necessarily b- select the new. They, they only select what is trending. Mm. Nairobi is one of the tre- most trendy country in Africa. Mm. There is very fashionable. So what they mean with the camera is selection of what is trending what is moving in a market. Mm. It is possible to find a gear with clothes that still have their tags on. Mm-hmm. Simply because they are not trendy. You mm. find them now going to the village at a very, very cheap price. I see. Yes. So this entire chain is mm-hmm. um, somebody in a Western country. Yes. From their home, mm-hmm. they looked at uh, their wardrobe. Yes. They picked some items. They felt, I do not want to... I don't need them. I don't need them. Mm-hmm. They take them to a center. And yes. this center, let's say, is run by... It's a collection it's point. It's a collection point. Yeah, they are, they are those beans okay. put everywhere in the, in, mm-hmm. the, in the West. So let's then that say that this one is managed by Salvation Army. So yes. Salvation Army picks from this collection point, mm-hmm. from several collection points, and takes them to one central location. Yeah, warehouse. A warehouse. Yes. And they then distribute some to those who are needy within that country. Yes. Then they have got to start sorting them out. Into, and sorting here means what? Putting aside yes, sorting T-shirt, means, jeans, yeah, curtains. Sort, sorting means separating them mm-hmm. according to country's demand. Like in Kenya, we have protocols of importation. Okay. We do not just import. We have protocols of importation. And one of the protocol is that you have to separate them. Mm. You have to have a bill of shirt. Mm. You have to have a bill of trouser. You have to have a bill of everything separate. Okay. The only mixed item that we, ca- we take is the children's clothing. That's so on what they mean. Everything else is has a bill, be separate. It's t-shirts, it's t-shirts. It is t-shirt. And it ha- if it is round neck, it's round neck. Oh, you can't just have at your old t-shirts, Paul. Yeah, America. yeah. We we still have, oh. but Kenya in particular mm. it has established its own way of doing this business. Okay. Yeah. And that's where now the cost element starts coming in. Yeah, the because cost you're element. Because you paying for the warehouse, yeah. you're paying for the people who are going to yes. the sorting and all that. Yes. And then you will transport that thing to yes. the uh, recipient country, Kenya. No, not even there. Uh. Even locally within the Western country, the point of corrections... They have to have tracks that are collecting these clothes. Mm. These yeah. clothes are not collected from one point. They are collected from different locations. Mm. You discover that one person has like, let's say like um, a, a savers. They have like 500 beans. Mm. So these 500 beans, they need a track that will be going around almost daily mm. collecting these clothes. So this is a labor implication. They also have this person who they have employed specifically to be a driver for this. They also have this warehouse that they have specifically they are doing this business in. Mm. Specifically they have these sorters 
they have managers mm -hmm. they have quality controllers they have all these kind of people is is a booming booming business it's a warehouse that is very very busy okay. but what i said if you buy a bill for example of t-shirt you buy it at fifteen thousand, then you discover that bill has almost 300 pieces so if you divide the 300 pieces with uh, 15,000, uh, 15, you will discover you are buying it very, very cheap. Mm. You are buying it very cheap. Mm. It is almost like somebody told you, I want to bless you with this business. You see? Yeah. That's why this business is a blessing to Africa. Mm. Okay. Because it is catering to even the person who has the least of money. And okay, so and this is on both sides. Yes, for the buyer as well as the seller. Yes, yes. Because the person who is entering into business for mm. what you've said, yes, you can actually buy this and actually start to make some money. Yes, yes. Um, and anybody, can Ed, anybody can purchase. I personally, mm. I started at three thousand. Mm. My basic capital was three thousand Kenya shillings, and I bought what people are calling fagia. What people think is waste is not waste. It's good quality clothes mm -hmm. that are not trendy in the city, mm -hmm. but they will be very trendy in the uh, outskirts. Mm -hmm. For example, I bought my Fagia and I went with it to Roiro. Mm -hmm. That was where I started at 3,000 shillings. As a business person with 3,000 shillings, today I am where I am. But my starting point was 3,000. Many people will look at 3,000. If you go to Isli, how many clothes can you buy at 3,000? But if you go to Gekomba, it's too many. Mm. Too many. Anybody who... I was telling some people the other day, if you are renting a house of 5,000 uh, shillings in Nairobi and you are not working, then you are not serious. Mm. You need to start a business. Mm. 5,000 is a lot of money in the business world. Mm. For example, if you come to Gekomba, you can buy something, uh, things for 1,000. You can come and select. You can come and fagia uh, with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And in the, in the future, you will discover that the business grows. Mm. I started at 3,000. That was the year 1996. Mm. And within six years, I, I, I was able to even buy a container. Mm. Now you're an importer. Yes. Mm. So you see, I bought fagia. And that Fagia, I took it somewhere. I sold it. And that became my business. I continued, mm. you know. Mm. So this, is, this, this business supports uh, business people mm. and people who are wearing these clothes. Mm. Yeah, the business person with the little money, you can purchase these clothes. Okay. And uh, now the person who is wearing with less Less mm. money, 20 shillings. You'll be you able are able to, to buy something. Something to buy. The Mitumba industry, though, has had some negative publicity. Yes. Okay? yes. Some perceptions. Number mm. one perception. For a long time, mm. Mitumba is dead people clothes. Yes. That you're coming to dump to us. Here. Yes. So you're basically using Kenya and other African countries as dumping ground. Yes. For what you do not want, you mm. rich people in the West. Yes. Secondly, mm -hmm. that because of this dumping and all then there's issues of quality mm -hmm. and standards mm -hmm. of what you're bringing to the country yes so you're basically looking for somewhere where you want to go and dump mm. and you come and see these poor people because they are poor and they <laughs> have, don't have clothes you uh -huh. and so it's 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 an insult to us yeah people. and number two mm -hmm. it's basically just disorganized and using us to dump how do you uh, respond to this? Uh, number one, I want to say Kenya has imported used clothes for more than 40 years now. Mm. Mm. More than 40 years, Kenya has been importing these clothes. So over the years, the Kenyan government has developed protocols of importation of used clothes into the country. Mm. So Kenya does not just import. There are protocols that are followed to make sure that we import what is good quality into Kenya. Mm. So we, we are not just importing. We, we are regulated by Kenya Bureau of Standard. We know what we bring in. It's not waste. Mm. Number two, the Western countries, they have been getting a lot of negative reports from people who have uh, motives. Mm. People who have their own selfish agendas have been publicizing very negative reports. For example, there's uh, uh, somebody calling themselves Changing Market Foundation. Mm. They have been publicizing uh, documents that Africa, we are importing over 40% waste. 
and in one container 40 percent is waste mm. how is that possible the kenyan government we are paying them about fifteen thousand us dollars fifteen thousand us dollars is paid directly to the government for a container for one 40 foot container mm. and then we have like five thousand dollars that is paid as shipping getting this consignment from the the, the uh, from the source to kenya is about five thousand dollars how how can somebody pay five thousand dollars plus fifteen thousand dollars plus the purchase price to have forty percent as waste does that make economic sense what does waste no. mean they, they they are saying forty percent is waste what does waste what do they mean by waste i don't know what they mean but i know but but i know we are not importing waste nobody in their own right mind will buy to come and dump in africa every country have their own problems with the dumping mm. so even the sorting centers they have their own issues with the dumping but when it comes to uh, the mituba traders nobody is importing waste it is not possible it is not sustainable right now as i have told you we are looking at about twenty thousand dollars getting a one forty foot container into kenya mm. shipping plus duty is about twenty thousand mm. dollars why would somebody do that why would somebody do, do that i believe it is very cheap mm. to dump in europe than to ship and dump in kenya you see it would be more costly to come yeah. and dump here it is more costly it's not sustainable it does not make business economic sense changing market foundation mm. has publicized he, he he wrote a report mm. that we are importing 40 percent waste and i think he was implying to fagia mm. and that's why i have talked about fagia mm. fagia is not waste fagia is clothes that are less trendy in the city but can be worn in the villages or in the slums they are cheaper clothes because in the city the business people who are doing this business they do not sell the last to the last one mm. they sell a certain percentage mm. then they, they 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 give these ones cheaper okay to other people who are in the villages but the who bottom are in line the slums the bottom line is that every item in that container yes meets the standard that yes we only have about camps. two percent that we can say is waste because it will not be fair for me to say mm. to sit here and say we do not have even one percent i will say two percent is waste because these clothes are sorted by people mm. and it's it's possible for one to have to make a mistake in a bill it's possible what does that what do you mean by two percent being waste? Is, yeah, is, two is it percent waste that it is something that cannot be worn it's torn it is, and some, all? It is something that can have a problem in in every bill it is possible to see few pieces one or two or three pieces that has issues but were not was not intended hmm. from the source hmm. because from the source they know what they do with the waste they have a way of dealing with it mm. for me as an importer if my my supplier sends me more than two percent waste that means next time i'll have a problem with him i will not buy from him because the market is very competitive right you have to have the best quality for you to maintain your clientele mm. this is professional business what's the impact of the mitumba industry in Kenya, mm -hmm. Teresia Wairimu, the chairperson of the Mitumba Consortium Association of Kenya, tells us, number one, there are over two million direct traders of Mitumba in the country. Number two, according to the association, over 80% of Kenyans wear second-hand clothes. All these are important. Um, the government is making 15,000 USD per each 40-foot container as duty. There's a lot of money. Mm. So it's a multi-billion shilling industry. Yeah. And then now these questions come in. How do they ensure quality? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that what is coming into the country is at least fit for purpose, is fit for humans to wear? Some reports have been published by Clean Up Kenya about 40% mm -hmm. of the clothes, mm -hmm. Mitumba clothes sold in this country mm -hmm. are waste. Yes. And you say two percent yes have you done any studies yes. as a mitumba consortium association yes that's that's the last study that we did mm. after the cleanup kenya did their report that 40 percent is waste we also had to do something we did our own uh, report 
which indicated that only 2% that comes into Kenya is waste. Because it does not make economic sense. Mm. Why would somebody import 40% waste? Is it sustainable? No. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do that. We are not stupid. These are <laughs> business people. Importers are business people mm. who are out there to make money. Not to lose money. Okay. Nobody will import waste. So this two percent. Yes. That comes in as waste. Yes. What do you do with it? No. It, it, actually, it is not intended waste. Mm. It is something that is not intended. Mm. So you can open a bill and find two percent, and you can find a, a bill and not find the two percent. Mm. That's why we wanted to be fair. We don't want to say, ah, we are very good, 100%. No, mm. we want to say, actually, it is possible to get 2% because these clothes are sorted by people. And sometimes it's possible for somebody not, not to see something that is torn, a dress mm. that has a hole somewhere, is torn somewhere. It's possible. Mm. Somebody might not see it. So where does it end up? Yeah, that one now end up in, uh, there, there are so many places, so many things that we do with the old clothes mm -hmm. in Africa, as you know. They are sold as rags, mm. they are sold as uh, wipers, they are sold as, uh, these clothes are sold as everything. They, they can become rags in the house, they can be used to make rags and mops. Mm -hmm. There are people who buy those. Yeah. So they'll still so, end up being everything used. in the market can be sold. So even what is considered waste, it, at that two percent, yes, can actually be repurposed for something yes, else. Yes, everything is repurposed for something else. Even those clothes that we call waste. If I bring a jacket like this mm. and it it is torn, it has a hole somewhere. Yeah. The, we also have fundis in the market, so this jacket will be taken to the fundi, and it will be fixed. Maybe it's, it's, it's torn somewhere that is visible. Yeah. That's where you find we have labels. You, you, you will discover something has a label <laughs> saying filler. Yeah. Uh, Hill, Tommy Hill figure. Mm. When you see that label saying Tommy Hill figure there, it does not mean it's coming from the company with that. It's the Mitumba people because they are very creative. There was a hole we have to cover it's it. It's a patch. Mm. So it's a patch. <laughs> but a, 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 a designer patch, mm. yeah, it makes it look good. It will make they'll make it look very nice. Mm. Okay, yeah. So everything here, before we call our uh, clothes, they are at the end of life here in Africa. It has to be really be used. It has to really mm. be used. Now in Europe, yes, where these clothes are coming from, yes. There's some conversation that's taking place in those markets. Yes. That because, you know, this has been uh, c categorized as dumping in Africa. Yes. And it's um, an unethical business. Yes. That they should stop sending yes. these clothes to Africa. Yes. Um, and this conversation is gaining momentum. Yes. How are you responding to that? Yeah, I want to respond to it uh, very simply. Mm that uh, the French government initiated these discussions and we do not understand why they are finding that textile business is a problem to the climate mm. or to the environment mm. because obviously we have other serious issues than the textiles. Uh, so talking about textiles, they, are, they have followed misinformation. There is a European article that spoke about 40% uh, waste in Africa. Uh, there is a foundation, it's called OR Foundation. Mm. OR Foundation, they made a report trying to insinuate that in, uh, Europeans are dumping their waste into Africa. So they did this report. They said they, they have pictures and photos from Ghana indicating they have mountains of textile waste mm. and when we talked we spoke to our ghana counterparts there is no mountain like that there is no waste like that so these are people who are clearly they have they have an agenda to attend oh, yeah oh our foundation recently they were funded by the shane fast fashion giant from china he funded them fifteen million dollars. Mm -hmm. So clearly, when they when they start now talk, speaking ill against Mitumba, then we know why mm -hmm. they received a hefty donation. So uh, uh, Shane has already penetrated the European market. They have it's very vibrant. Mm -hmm. So the okay. next market they are eyeing is Africa. So so 
because we do not know for sure yes those allegations that you made are real let's move back into how are you as the mitumba consortium association first of all addressing these concerns yes so let's say the french government has taken up this matter yes and the french government is initiating conversations yes on stopping the exportation of second-hand clothing yes. from france to africa what so are you doing first of all i want to back a little bit mm. and say the, these are not just allegations. Mm. It is in the public domain mm. that the OR Foundation have received $15 million from Shane as donation in the foundation. Yes, that, that could be true. South Africa. Mm. It, is, it, is just, it is just now the connection between that, that fact, that fact yes. and the insinuation mm -hmm. that they are there for now yes. doing an underhand, underhand uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to draw that line. Yes. Okay. So let's get back to the facts. What are you doing yes. to address the, those European countries? Yes, my main agenda is to try to talk to the policymakers, people who advise governments uh, on policies. That has been my main campaign. I have been to these like six European countries. I have been to Lithuania. I was in uh, 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 Finland, uh, Sweden, uh, Denmark and uh brussels that's belgium and holland mm. i have sat down with the policymakers, uh, trying to talk to them about the reality in the market mm -hmm. because what they are seeing are documents written by people in the offices i need to show them the reality on the ground mm. and the reality is very simple in kenya it's two million people who are employed by this trade two million people so if you sit in an office and discuss about jobs of two million people you have who you have no idea how they survive mm. this is africa when i get there i tell them the reality is in africa you lose one job it's not easy to find another job mm. it's not easy to find an, a, a, another job and the people who are so much successful in this trade are housewives people with no university or college education mm. people who have no vocation or education and our young men who are leaving school before they find another job they say they start this business mm. because it's easy to start so my main agenda is to speak to these people to show them the sense and to tell them africans are not stupid they are not given these clothes by force by some Muzungu in an office, you, because you are stupid African, you will buy this waste. <laughs> no, we are professional people. This, this business is very professional, especially in Kenya. Over 40 years of this business, the government has already developed protocols. And these protocols have been revised over time. They are, they, we revised them in 2020. Mm. We are still continuing. So in Kenya, we have protocols of importation. Mm. The government is aware of how we are importing mm. and what we are importing into the country. So my main agenda is to speak to these people, policymakers, so that they, they can speak sense to these people. Mm. Because number one, these articles that are written by people in big offices, they are, they are trying to attract mm. money because these are foundations. And everything, let's speak the truth, everything, even these people calling themselves, we are a non-profit organization, we are a foundation, all of them are business people. That's why they receive donations. You don't do that for one year without money. Okay. You need money for yourself, for your organization. Mm. So everybody is doing it for money. Number one, I, I, I spoke about OR Foundation because she's the, one, she's the person who wrote these documents to the French government and the French government bought it. She is a person who has received a hefty donation from Fast Fashion. Mm. So Fast Fashion is, num is, is number one now in South Africa. He's number one in South Africa. So the next destination is where? Is the Mitumba places where we are buying Mitumba. Banning the exportation of Mitumba into Kenya is a direct promotion of cheap clothing from Asia. Is a direct promotion of cheap quality clothes from Asia. Hmm. If we don't buy Mitumba, 
then we promote something else. Mm. Teresa, there are very many competing conversations in all yes. of this. And even as you say that, then of course our eyes are cast wide and say, okay, if there's such insistence on the banning of Mitumba M importation mm -hmm. uh, to Kenya or other countries around Africa mm -hmm. or other places, then perhaps on the other side there's a benefit to somebody. Mm -hmm. That's uh, mm -hmm. that's not ignored mm -hmm. and yes. you can see that. Mm -hmm. The intrigues and the details of that then, of course, based on facts, then would be interesting to look into. Mm -hmm. One of the other parallel conversations is mm -hmm. that the importation of mm -hmm. Mitumba mm -hmm. stifles the textile or manufacturing industry mm -hmm. in Kenya. Yes. That can Kenya have a thriving and robust textile industry where it's producing its own clothing mm -hmm. um, for the wear of Kenyans? Yes. And that this industry mm -hmm. is 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 it, yeah exactly doing it's doing just that it's stifling that um uh, opportunity to produce and also for kenyans to wear locally manufactured clothing what would you say about yeah that? i want to say that kenya is a very competitive market mm. and uh, that is to mean that textile our our local textile and mitumba can coexist mm. they can compete in the market mm. it is about the demand and the supply and the affordability of the person buying the power of a person making choice mm. it is possible for them to drive to drive together so what it means in kenya we are we are the biggest supporters of revival of our textile industry mm. as you may know we do not have an existing textile industry in kenya mm. simply because we are we don't have enough cotton we do not, our journalists are like, they are locked down, mm. almost 100%. So, we have had this conversation before, even with the government. And we, as Mitumba Consortium, we committed ourselves in promoting the government mm. in the revival of local textile industry. Mm. Why? Why? Because we also want to see our country growing and moving forward. Mm. So, number one, we want to support the government in growing the cotton. We must go back to farming for us to say we are reviving our textile industry. Mm -hmm. Because as per now, if we say we are reviving textile industry, that means we go to Asia to start buying uh, materials yeah. mm. for our fundies to make clothes. Mm. Mm. And that means the clothes will be very expensive. But if we want to revive our textile industry we have to do it all the way mm. from growing the cotton reviving our generis and uh, uh going back to the villages for vocational trainings mm. yeah raising mafundis there then we can now say we are having a thriving uh, textile industry in kenya mm. after we do that but as per now mitumba and cot uh, our textile industry they can coexist they can work together mm. yeah so you don't find that the Mitumba is actually stifling the no. development of the local industry? No. And you don't find uh -huh. that the revival of the local textile industry mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. outcompete the Mitumba? It is okay. Let them compete. Let them outdo each other. Mm. But let nobody kill the industry. Mm. Let nobody kill it. Let the market kill it. Okay. Yeah. So if we have our local textile, mm. cheap clothing, cheap clothes, and the mitumba now that means the person buying has the power to choose okay because the our new clothes that our textile is cheap mitumba is cheap let the person have power to choose so yeah. what i'm hearing from you uh -huh. is that according to the mitumba association yes your biggest threat is not local textile no your biggest threat is cheaper imports particularly from asian countries yes so why is that a threat? The, no, it's not actually a threat. Mm. We, we, we look at it at, uh, at, we look at it in terms of our environment. Mm -hmm. These clothes, we, you cannot wash them five times. Which ones? The, the new clothes that are coming from Asia. Okay. You cannot clean the, wash them five times. So if you cannot wash them five times, that means we have a lot of waste. We have a lot of textile waste. Mm. Mm. These clothes, the manufacturers need to manufacture good quality clothes, mm. something that can take two lives. That's why we promote Mitumba, good quality clothes that are taking two, three lives. Mm -hmm. mm. They can be passed over. The world is not about manufacturing. The world is about reuse mm. and recycle, circularity. That's what we are promoting. 
and we are very happy because Europe is talking about circularity mm. and again they are talking about burning the expectation of mitumba and this is where why i have been meeting them trying to ask them now you are the biggest promoters of circular economy mm. so we are the promoters of circular economy in terms of textile mm. so what are you talking about what are you trying to say what's their response to this because i mean it sounds obvious yeah if you are thinking about a circular economy yes you have to think after first use, second use, yes. up to the end, yes. where this goes to. Mm -hmm. If the European governments, mm -hmm. where they know that this uh, second reused clothes are mm -hmm. getting into mm -hmm. into the Salvation Armies and all these other charitable organizations, mm -hmm. they go into charity. Mm -hmm. It's more than enough for their local population. So it has to leave the country. When they say that we're considering banning mm -hmm. exportation of mm -hmm. secondhand clothes from our country, mm -hmm. What are they proposing? I think they are they are basing their decisions on on false information. Mm. They are not even sure of what they mean by saying we want to we want to stop the exportation of used clothes into Africa because only five percent in Europe buy used clothes. Only five percent mm. they buy used clothes. So the the rest they don't have anywhere to take them. So what they want to do actually is to impose regulations that will control the exportation of mitumba into african countries mm -hmm. and these regulations will affect millions of people because for any policy to be passed it takes like uh, in europe is one to three years mm. in kenya is about a whole year mm. if we are to have new regulations so we are talking to these governments we do not need these new regulations. Our government has already put in place regulations mm. of how to import used clothes. We do not need Europe talking about Mitumba business. They have no idea. Mm. Some big short men in French government came up with this idea of, of regulating the exportation of Mitumba. Mm. Exporters of Mitumba are professional people and business people who are making their living from this. And uh, bringing up these regulations is putting at risk mm. millions of jobs in Africa. In East Africa alone is about 3.4 million. In Kenya is about 2 million. And in Kenya is about 20 million, over 20 million people depend on used clothing business. Mm. So many livelihoods will be put at risk when we follow these policies mm. that they are trying to put in place. So, mm. our government has supported us. And even today in this broadcast, mm. I will continue to talk to our president. We need him to consider lowering the, ex the importation of duty. Mm. This is too much. Over $15,000 is too much. We need him to consider us. Uh, let's sit down. Mm. So many people have stopped importing. Mm. There are p so many people are being rendered jobless mm. because this is too much. Over 20,000 in duty and shipping is too much. We mm. need the president because he he said he, he bought his first shoe. That was Mutumba mm. at class 7. So if he bought at class 7 his first shoe in Mutumba, mm. then he knows how, how people are he suffering. He knows the value of Mutumba. Yeah, he knows the value of Mutumba and he knows how Mutumba is helping people. Mm. So we need him and we are asking him mm. to really consider Mitumba people mm. and give us an opportunity to explain to him so that he can lower the duty. It okay. is for the good of Kenyan people, the common Mwananchi. Is there any African country that has banned importation of secondhand clothes? Mm. I, apart from Rwanda, I don't know any mm. other. What's the reason that Rwanda did this? Uh, Rwanda said they want to promote their local textile mm -hmm. and which is not existence. They, they only have one factory that is doing it. So what they did, mm. you ban the uh, importation of used clothes. You promote the importation of cheap quality clothes. Mm -hmm. Cheap, very cheap quality clothes. Mm. That's what is happening. He needs to open his eyes and see. Mm. We all need to, to talk about circularity. We need to talk about circular economy, mm. not manufacturing. Yeah. Okay. So what do we have as a current situation today? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean I'm, 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 talk, I'm looking at Nairobi and there's so many satellites. Mm -hmm. 
you know, areas where, you know, the Mutumba business then mm. is thriving. Mm-hmm. And then there are folks, like you've said, who might be, you know, slightly, you know, apprehensive or scared to continue with the business. Yeah. Do you see that it uh, is a sustainable source? Because I, we've already established that it's income for people. I it's think, an option for others. I it's think, sustainable. Yeah, I think the right word to say people are not scared to continue. Mm. People have been thrown out of business. This is Africa. Mm. We do not have many options. You don't stop this because you have this. What you have is what you got. So people have been thrown out by circumstances mm. out of this business because it's becoming too expensive for an importer to pay 20000 just to have one 40-foot container into the country. Mm. That is too much money. That's why we need the government to reconsider so that we can have more of our people in business, uh, creating good environment and good livelihoods for the people. Mm. Uh, For that matter, is dignified life. So we need to come back to the government, government to help us. This business is a business that you can depend on Mm. because it's a business you can start with a very small amount of money Mm. and you can sustain it. It is a business that have great testimonies like myself i started with three thousand kenya shillings look at me today i do not have uh degrees i do not have that much education but i know what this this business has raised my standard Mm. to where i am today Mm. yeah teresia thank you very much again for joining us today yes and for articulating the issues on behalf of your members of the mitumba consortium association of kenya Mm -hmm. uh, seeking to get all of us to understand the impact of the mitumba industry not just for the economy Mm -hmm. but also just for people in terms of the social impact of the mitumba industry the number of people who are end up wearing these clothes, the number of people who are employed in this sector. Mm-hmm. Teresia Wairimo, the chairperson of the Mitumba Consortium Association of Kenya. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.